Are you aware of these secret games at Disney? Let's discuss. Welcome to Princess and Scoundrel, where we take you along our scrappily ever after, from Fantasyland to Tatooine and everything in between. I'm Sarah. And I'm Steven. I feel it in my voice now. I'm very aware of the fact that like, I have not fully recovered from losing my <laughs> voice last week. <laughs> I mean, it was one of those things that we talked about how it doesn't matter whenever we have an interview or some of some sort is when you lose your voice. So every time it happens multiple times a year, I am probably like, I don't know, 90% back. And so we're here, we're recording this. And this is a topic that I have wanted to talk about for probably a year now. So I'm very excited that we're well, actually talking okay, so about let's, it. Okay, it, so it, it's Secrets. it's kind of talking about these quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes, of secret games. Yeah. Um, and this kind of spurred from recently our friends went to Disneyland and they experienced Seasons of the Force. So mm -hmm. it's like this, all these Star Wars things happening at the Disneyland park. Uh, but there was this game, this scavenger hunt. Called Seek and Find. Seek and Find. So we were kind of like, you know what? I think it's time. I think it's time to talk about yes. all these types of games. These, uh, you know, people eaters is, you know, what some call. So they're not technically secret games. They're games that Disney has and announces and have things for, but people don't play them enough. I, don't, I think people don't play them and people definitely Disney doesn't talk about them enough. So they're not getting marketed. And here's my thing. But see, I, when you say marketing, this is like, I love marketing. No, it, well, it gets, it's like one of those things that I feel that Disney doesn't do because they just rely on it's up to you to to discover it. And I think at one time that was fun, but at the same time, you have to let me know what, what options are available to me. Yeah, show me a menu so yeah. I can pick from it. I think the other thing with Disney's marketing, and that could probably be a whole other discussion, is like... And mark it down. Write it down that Disney doesn't market all of their stuff too hard on their own because they expect others to do it because there are so so they many. know we're going to be talking about it yeah. and here we are doing it <laughs> dang it all right that's it so <laughs> the first thing we're going to market today is <laughs> okay but no so there are these i like to call them secret games um they don't really all fit into one bucket but if you wanted to put a label on them they're more like scavenger hunts within the parks and we're going to focus primarily on Walt Disney World because that's where we go the most. And honestly, like Disneyland doesn't get as many of these as that I'm aware of. Um, I mean, they, they kind of get the 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 festival ones. There was like a flower and I think it was a flower and garden one. They, they don't have flower and garden. They have food and wine. They have like a Maybe, tiny food, food and food, wine yeah. one. So it's like, but again, I think that's just the ones that they we've heard about. Right. You know, there could be other ones that... There could be more. Let's go through them and let's talk about our experiences with them because this is something like we truly love yeah. <laughs> to do in the parks. So first off, we're going to pour one out for what I think was one of our favorite games to do in the parks that is no longer around, but I think really set the... Like laid the groundwork for a lot of the scavenger hunts, which was Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's where it you, it laid the groundwork for us to feel like it was the secret game. Again, people knew about it. You would go up to the front to the firehouse and go get a pack of cards, and they set you on a quest. But we didn't know that this was a thing you could do for years. We had been going to the park for a couple of years before we knew about this. And then once we knew about it, we're like, oh, this is cool. And what it was, it was a card-based game. So you'd go and you'd pick up like, I don't remember, they'd give you like a pack of 10 cards. Uh, was it? I think it was maybe three. three or maybe four. It wasn't that yeah. many, but they would give you a little pack of cards. And if you'd never played before, they'd show you a tutorial, but there were, they would set you in a different land within Magic Kingdom. And they had these, it was a tap point. You would tap your magic band 
right? It was tied to a magic band, right? I believe so, yeah. It was tied to a magic band and you would tap your magic band and there would be a screen and it would be hidden usually within like a shop window or something. And you would have to fight these villains. And you almost had like Pokemon cards that you were fighting with, but you would hold it up kind of like um, at Harry Potter when you're doing the wand tricks or whatever, but you'd hold it up and camera would see what you, what card you held up and yeah. you would fight these villains. And it like at the time when we were doing this, what, five years ago, we're like, this is the coolest. <laughs> and it would take you about an hour to run through each of the lands and do the story within that land. But you could go back and you could get more cards and do a different land. And there was a whole set of like 100 or 200 cards in the base deck. I, I don't think you would be able to get them. It was like per day. You can only get a pack or two. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So it was very limited in that sense. But but yes, it, it was those were the draws because one, we weren't professional uh sorcerers. Sorcerers. <laughs> uh, uh, like well, knowing the game, but also just not knowing uh the rides, like the ride system, the fast pass system. Yeah. And so we would just kind of like meander around and like, okay, let's go to this ride, let's go to this ride. And because there was so many long lines, we just like, hey, let's try this thing. And it was open. Like there was no lines for, you know, you weren't waiting for someone to do yeah. the next little quest. Uh, so that was like really cool. The other part of it, it was the collecting part. The The cards were just, you know, here's some Disney characters and you collect. And they had like a, a full collection of them. It was, you know, whatever the the number was right. and you know people would trade the card so it was just like you know again like a pokemon card you know trading card game uh so that was like really cool i think one so we had done one and then i think on our next trip when we went back we did a different land and we went it was inside most of them are outside and it, this one was like inside of a quick service dining and it was like a fireplace i think and you go tap in and then we see a bunch of people sitting behind us and they have binders, like massive binders. And we're like, it's like the pin pin collectors. They yeah. Were, they were sitting there. But we've, we've never been into that thing. And so we were like, we started talking to them because we had our, our son with us at the time. And these people were incredibly kind. We started talking to them about the game. They were teaching us about it. And they were like, hey. And they kind of like talked to them themselves. And then they like pulled out the secret bag and they gave us a full set of cards. And we're like. Oh my God, this is amazing. But they had these binders and they started telling us, hey, if you go to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party or the Very Merry Christmas Party, they have specific for every year, they'll have a new card just for that event. And we're like, oh, oh, okay. Like we we get yeah. how this is going. There's exclusives. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that was, again, that, that was where it was really cool because you could go, uh, you know, during these parties and get just a card. If you knew about it, you you go get this card and it was a special card. So. Right. So I loved it. I thought it was a great way to get you moving around Magic Kingdom because it would take like maybe an hour and you didn't have to commit to it for that whole time. You could go do things like you could go and then you can go ride rides and you come back to it or whatever. Um, but it was just a really fun, free thing to do. Now, one of the things I didn't like about it was it was a physical card game, so you had to keep hold of those cards. Yeah. And so, and once you got, like, these people gifted us this full stack of cards, we're like, do we bring this every time? This is, like, our full set. Do we just bring, like, half of them? Sometimes you forget them. Um, but it was wonderful. And I think they closed it down right before the pandemic. And they just, they said it's not coming back. Yeah, I mean, that's disappointing because I think it was a good way for in Magic Kingdom to have this other option of, you know, not rides, you know, not food or attractions. Right. Like it's always just another, another people eater, right? right? That's what it was. Yeah, it was wonderful. But that one was great. It is no longer around. Let's talk about things that are in the parks that we could do um, that maybe, maybe need a little bit of improvement. <laughs> So I think that leads perfect because we're talking about Magic Kingdom and you're like, wait a minute, they do have something there. They have statues. So that came for the 50th anniversary. Yes, not the like, 100th anniversary. Not, that was the next week. That was the, the 50th, the 50th anniversary. anniversary. Well, they didn't remember the statues didn't come out to like the end of the 50th year. Uh, but let's, let's move on. But it was also in conjunction with the Magic Band Plus. Yes. So they were using technology 
using these physical statues and you were able to interact with them. Really cool idea, right? The t just like any kind of technology, there's there's like some hiccups. Yeah, uh, it works. It worked when when we were able to, and, and this is not just uh, Magic Kingdom necessarily. It is all the parks. Right, it was all four. Um, and it it's through the Play Disney app. Right, and you could go and like collect all of them in each of the parks. Yeah, it was like a little bit of a game, and and I think. It, it we could we'll talk about it more or maybe on the the app side of it because I think that's there's there's a lot of function there but it's just underutilized mm -hmm. but but yeah I think it was one of those things that the the statues they stopped like here here they are here's the the playability about it but there's nothing to go past it right and sometimes it doesn't work and because it's a Magic Band Plus like it's on your wrist so. To activate it, you had to wave. And if it doesn't work the first time you do it, then you just feel like you're sitting there like waving at nothing. And then if people don't know, because nine times out of ten when you're over there waving at a statue and it starts, like it says the thing, people are like, oh, what is that? And then they have like no magic band or like a regular magic band. And so then they start waving. You're like, oh, no, I've got a special band. And you have to like explain it. So it was kind of secret in that. Not everybody knew what was happening, but you just you feel silly like standing there like I'm just gonna keep waving until I mean this I would thing just walk back. by and and give it like when you I were would like feel pushing the, a stroller and you'd be like Meow. I would feel it Meow. wave yeah like a mayor waving at a parade, <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it didn't work. But the thing without and it's cool and the statues are still out. They kind of, they took off the fiftieth uh, okay. anniversary placards, but and you I think you can still go wave at them if you wear your Magic Band Plus, but. That's all you're doing is just interacting with a statue and there's not really uh, an objective. Yeah. Once you've collected them all and play Disney parks, that's really all you can do with them. Otherwise yeah. Otherwise you that, just go look at them. Like yeah. We, that, go, we go wave to BB-8 every time we're in Hollywood Studios. Yeah. But, I'm, and, but I, I think that's the thing is like there's nothing to progress that. Like, they're you know, they're really cool. It's fun. But maybe change them out. So, you know, do something a little bit different or you have to have something in the app where there's a reason to go to them. Right. Uh, may, you know, add the season type of stuff to it. Do where it's like, uh, it changes it up. So I think that was like one of those, one of those things that it was a novel idea, but it just kind of puttered out with that in the same sentiment. We're kind of, we're oh. just like going straight on it. Our favorite land, oh. Galaxy's Edge. Hmm. The Batu Bounty Hunt. I think it 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 has something to do with the Magic Band Magic Band Plus that made it just kind of limiting in that sense. It is the most expensive of these scavenger hunts, if you will, to participate in. It is the highest paywall. Yeah. And the payoff for it isn't there, really. Yeah. We love Galaxy's Edge. It can do almost no wrong. But when it comes to the Batu Bounty Hunt, like it lacks. Yeah, the, I, I completely agree. The premise of it is you have to have a Magic Band Plus. You can't do it with the the card or a regular Magic Band because it uses that haptic feedback and it, it literally will the, light the, up. The technology and the, 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 the entire technology around it is incredible. Incredible. The concept is great. You scan your band. It adds some kind of feature and remembers. And remember, th this this is our patents we were talking about a long time ago, <laughs> episode number two. But you scan in, it remembers who you are, mm -hmm. what level you're at, and it gives you a task of finding this bounty. Right. Then there are points in Galaxy's Edge. There's and, these panels at these doors. Yes. And you could use the app where it has like this, you know, quote unquote x-ray vision that mm. you could you you know ar uh scan it okay but also your band it's like a hot cold uh vibration right which that's really Again, cool it's really cool but once you find those doors that they have as you know they've indicated as uh bounty doors yeah it becomes just and then okay and then you've you found your bounty and you return it back to a uh 
Right. So it's a yeah. hot cold. So if you're going the wrong direction, it's red. If you're going the right direction, it's green and it'll like vibrate faster. And then if once you found it, it vibrates really fast. And I think it's purple. Yeah. And so that means, okay, boom, I've collected my bounty. You have to go back and collect your payment. Yeah. Right. And then you can go get another bounty if you want. That That's the mechanics of the game. And you have 20 bounties. So you do that and you repeat it 20 times but it, at yeah. the same doors in the same land. And there's no real differences between any of them. And if you're trying to play with somebody, so like you and our son doing it together, you go and you tap it and you get your bounty. Well, your bounty's on the opposite end. The opposite end of the land. Because they, they try to distribute everybody that's right. participating. And you can't say like, oh, we're doing this together. We want to go find it together. So it's like you both scan in and then you're like, well, no, I need to go this way. And he's like, well, I need to go that way. And you're like, no, nah, we're going my way. Or like, he's like, no, I'm going, we're going over here. And so I, full disclosure, I have not completed all my bounties. You have, haven't you? Yeah. yeah okay. We did. So y'all did. Cause I think you guys committed to like an afternoon and you just did it. Yeah. We, there was one time when we went and we were, <laughs> it was early on in Batu bounty hunt. And we, we scanned in to grab bounties and we were going to go do them. And then the skies opened up and it just started pouring in Batu, do you remember this? I do. And we like hid under Ronto Roasters and it was gorgeous. It was absolutely gorgeous. But my one annoyance was that the magic band on my wrist just kept like beeping and flashing lights at me to the point where I just like took it off and I was like, I am done with this game. <laughs> I can't, I can't do it. Um, but that's the thing too, is like if you scan in and then you're like, oh wait, I have a lightning lane or I have a dining, like you basically just have to let it time itself out. Yeah. And I do like the, that it is – you use a magic band. Like you're using technology, but you're not necessarily on your phone the entire time. Yeah. You can be if you want to, but you don't have to. So I do like that. It's just that it's repetitive and there's no payoff. Once you get the final bounty – And and this is where I feel like the app didn't really build on it more mm -hmm. because it would have been nice in there to show – these bounties that you you've collected yeah uh you know yes you get credits but again it's there's nothing that you can do with these credits there's not you know badges in the game that you could you know trade for or whatever right. so again there's just like things in the app where i think it hasn't fully been developed that it would be really nice if hey add more bounties let let me see all my bounties that i've done let me trade those credits that I've earned for other things within the land. Right. Um, so again, I think that's where it's just, that's, it's not to that point of like fully flushed out, but again, the technology is like super cool. And it's, I think it could be used in other places. It's just getting it to be useful. Like, cause you know, now, a more, majority of the time, we don't even take our magic band plus. Magic band plus. No, that's a tongue twister. It is. Uh, well, but just because, like, you have to charge it to to use it. You do. You have to charge it every day. And like, <clears throat> the two that we're talking about specifically, Batu Bounty Hunt and the fiftieth anniversary statues, those are the only two that really and really kind of the only benefits of having magic band plus. Yes, you've the got fireworks. like the fireworks and the. Okay. <laughs> Like you're just worried about like, oh, am I getting an a, like a text or something? Especially you have like a an eye a watch. Like a watch that vibrates. Um so it's like, okay, maybe it's a benefit, maybe it's not. It's cute, it's fun. But those are the only ones that really require a Magic Band Plus. Magic Band Plus is like thirty, forty dollars minimum if you're just getting a basic one. So it's pricey. But when I have clients that are coming to me when I'm, you know, booking trips for them and they're like, Hey, what do you think about Magic Band Plus? I'm like well, it is and it isn't, right? I, I, I would think because, again, as a person that goes frequent, we know the other options. We know that if it's for a room key, you could, you know, when you check in, you could get a, a card. Um, you have the app. You, ha you could use your smart device, uh, you know, smart watches. Yeah. If you have an old magic band, you could use your, your old magic band. So... We know of all the options, but someone that doesn't go all the time, they may see these magic bands and you're like, oh, let me let me get one. Let me see what. OK, here's a magic band plus. Like, what is what's that about? But that's the thing. If you're paying 
forty dollars for each Magic Band Plus in your family, and this is like the first time you're going to Disney, and you don't know if you're going to go back. That's over a hundred dollars, you know, for a family of four, just for the opportunity to possibly do these things on your first trip. I'm usually one that's like, if you think your kids are going to like waving at the statues and the lights and the haptic feedback, maybe get it for them. But I think this is where they they took a different approach to getting the buy-in from from uh, clients from you know the, cons- the, the guests, consumer yeah. because the initial ones the magic band ones and the magic band twos they were giving them away literally giving them like, to resort guests. you you came at the resort like here's a magic band because they wanted people to start using them and with this one it was like here you like magic plan here's magic plan Ma- magic band plus man <laughs> oh it's going to get me we're, i want to be done with this but here here it is but it's this much and you're like whoa like that's that's a steep amount to to pay even with this you know the limited edition ones yeah you know, in comparison i know like you said we we honestly we just kind of forget to bring magic bands nowadays <laughs> but if we are we're bringing magic band twos not the magic band plus it's because you don't have to charge it and now you don't it. have to charge them to do the normal uh magic band functionality yeah. it's just the the lights and sounds the but extra stuff yeah so all right, let's throw our Magic Band Pluses out of the way. Let's move on to the the actual secret games, if you will, that we love and that we are excited about and that we, we've we done multiple times. Yeah. I mean, I think we've – and we've talked about them here before and other, like, aspects of, of Disney traveling of, you know, because the thing we always try to say is, like, you don't have to do food. Uh, you know, we're – not crazy foodies. Like we we like to try new things, but we're not like I have to eat 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 you know eat all these different things. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm I don't know my taste compared to your taste. You know, I'm pointing out there TV Land, but it's like that's not my my forte. Right. right? I'm not a connoisseur of anything. <laughs> uh, Leave that to the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> but there's that. Our kids are are barely getting to the that height of wanting to ride rides the, so, the, the good rides yeah the good rides but you know just the big rides yeah and even that like even if they're height do they want to ride those rides so that kind of cuts out rides now let's go do you know attractions meet and greets so that you know it, it starts to narrow those options down but those tend to be long lines as well mm-hmm. so we always try to look for these other things to do you know, so because we want to be at the park, we want to be able to hang out at the park, go look at things and experience things. And that's why, you know, right now, like Epcot's kind of like that place to to do those things. The one. But before we get to Epcot, we should probably do the other one because it, it probably needs a little bit of improvement on its own. OK. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but we love an escape room. We love a puzzle. And so these are the ones that are really like kind of fit for us <laughs> i feel like they made them just for us which is so nice but at animal kingdom there is the wilderness explorers it's like the cutest thing <laughs> like, i love it so if you watched up and you saw um oh my god his russell. name is russell thank you for that i would have never gotten <laughs> that russell was a wilderness explorer like a boy scout um and you he was collecting badges that was part of, like kind of his role in the movie and in Animal Kingdom, they have these passport books where you go all around the park, like all around the park, every reach of them. You have to get on like a 20 minute train ride to get some of them and you collect stickers. And for each page in your passport, you're learning something about different cultures or animals or conservation and just like all things Animal Kingdom. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Like it is a way to get kids they learn without knowing that they're learning. <laughs> um, but it gives them kind of a goal to to explore the parks and in different reaches of the parks that you wouldn't have necessarily gone to before. Yeah. They're people eating. They're trying to get you to explore all of the reaches of the park, which I think is a really smart way. And I think that's why, yes, it could use improvement because once you've done it, you've done it. You don't really need to go back and redo it. Um, but it – it gets the kids to get excited and to fill up these books. Now, it is a physical 
experience where you have this book and if you are like me and you we've done this it took us like two years to finally do all of the stops because we would leave the book at home we'd be like dang <laughs> as but you can go get a new book and then you can go get new stickers and then if you're crazy like me you can peel off the newest stickers <laughs> that you got and put them back on the first book <laughs> <laughs> so you have a full complete passport i have a full passport now i'm very proud of it now i i think the part the replayability that's something i always think about you know i, I play video games and it's like what's the replayability about it mm -hmm. i think that's where they could add because this this goes all through the park so it's like it's fantastic there's there's always things changing at, at animal kingdom like updates you know holidays and stuff like that they could add badges and then you kind of came up with like, well, what if they had like actual badges because it's, you know, themed it more. So then now you're getting into that whole like, here's some merch that goes along with it. Right. My my idea was like, sell... like here's a business uh, proposition. Listen, I've got a marketing <laughs> opportunity for you. You sell a sash for ten dollars in the gift shops, right? Like right after or even at the first kiosk, because it's like kind of when you first walk in before you get to the tree of life is where the, the first one is. You sell a sash for like 10 bucks that the kids can wear. It's Velcro, it's adjustable, whatever. And then you just do like the pin buttons. Like not the fancy ones, but just kind of the punch ones that oh, okay, anybody yeah, can yeah. make at home. Like, cause ba patches are, are expensive and like nobody's gonna like, like iron them onto your thing. But just do these like little pins that are really cheap. And then you've got these kids running around the parks wearing these sashes or adults. Cause that's the wonderful thing. All of these things, we're talking about like <laughs> us taking our kids to do them, but anybody can do them yeah. which is the best part but just imagine these kids running around with this and you're like what are you what are you doing that, like that looks really cool like where did you get that but then then it brings more awareness to it so that more people do it and then more people are getting dispersed throughout the park instead of all going to pandora <laughs> which is what you do in animal kingdom yeah. you're either in pandora or you're over at expedition everest or you're in line for the safari like those are the three things to do in that park sorry the, the three big things the three big things. We're gonna have to have an Animal Kingdom day for you, Sarah. Or what? I all been... the other options that it's not just those three rides. I, listen, <laughs> we go to Dino Land every time we go to Animal Kingdom, specifically for Triceratops spin, which is that's a whole other story. Why are there meteors <laughs> circling those dinosaurs on that ride? It's so messed up. Anyway, <clears throat> I think as, I think that would take it to the next level, and it would bring awareness to it in a very easy way that one is making you money, Disney, and two is free marketing. You are having people, you are, people are paying you to market this experience. Yeah. That's it. She's raising her hands. In, 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 in ire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's Wilderness Explorers. We we completed that one a couple of years ago, but, but also like, why don't you have seasonal things? Why don't you have yeah. one about solar eclipse? Did you already say that? No, I didn't say. I said that she should have uh, seasonal things, and I didn't even think about the just of recent the solar eclipse. But yeah. but yeah, just like different things like that that have to do with nature and conservation and whatnot. Uh, yeah. I think those are just you know the the maybe a yearly reminder of conservation, you know, recycling or something. Yeah. Arbor Day. There's options yeah. there. Okay, so now let's talk about our beloved Epcot scavenger hunts, and. Yes, this conversation was was kind of created and happened now because of the seasons of the forest and the the little seek and find scavenger hunt that they have over in Disneyland right now. But also, we did which this. we're going to talk about. I think that's like the next because these are like the others. But yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. We haven't done it, but we we've, we've got intel on it. Yeah. Um, but last year when we went for spring break. The crowds are high. There's the wait times are high. So it's just like we don't necessarily want to wait in line all day. We've done the rides. We're good with them. Like like you said, we don't need any of those things, but we just want to be in the parks and explore and have fun. So we did that last year for spring break. And then when we went back this year for spring break, we did the same thing. We rope dropped. Here's the thing. And here's where like I'm kind of a little bit like not irked by it, but we got up early, early, early. We hustled and we got out of that hotel room and we made it to Epcot for rope drop for early entry for resort guests. So like 30 minutes before the park opened. We're like, this is great. We're going to rope drop Ratatouille and we're going to go ride a couple rides and then we'll just like 
see how the day goes. But you rope drop, you can get a few rides in, right? We tap in right there at International Gateway at the back, of, like right next to Ratatouille. The line was... What? Everybody had that same idea <sighs> of going to Ratatouille. It was the... like a 70 minute wait. And this was like 30 minutes before official park opening. We're like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And so we're, I remember standing there like, I don't want to wait in this line. I don't even really like this ride. <laughs> like, what do we do? And you were like, you know, what we could. Oh, we had purchased the scavenger hunt. So we'll talk. Let's talk about that first. But we also decided to do this other, which I feel like is even more secret scavenger hunt, if you will, or game within Epcot. But <clears throat> We bought, as we do every time we walk into Epcot, the scavenger hunt maps. Yeah. So they're amazing. They're literal, like, physical maps that you can buy. And it is themed to each of the different festivals. And then they do have an Easter egg hunt specifically around Easter time. Um, but you go around World Showcase. You go around the front of Epcot. And you have to find whatever the the mascot is of that festival and the item that they're with. And you match it up on on this map and then you turn it in and you get a prize. So this is the one you pay for it. So all of the other ones are free except for the Magic Band Plus ones, but this one you pay like 10 bucks for it. But you also get a prize. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna pause you there. I'm I'm doing air quotes for the people listening. It, the prize is, I don't think equivalent to- To what you pay. To what you pay. <laughs> you're paying for the experience okay so it, it's but it's again it's fun it, it's something that our kids have really you know got into so now whenever we do go for like whatever the fact because it's food and wine has remy yep uh the flower and garden has buzz spike the or beat. spike mm -hmm. uh, uh, buzz <laughs> um and then farts has the figment is it, oh yeah it's figment and then the eggs the eggs the, the, the rabbits yeah um so yeah i mean it it definitely is one of those cool things because around the world showcase we could have adult beverages but the kids are able to go look for these uh little statues right you so know, through the land typically we tag team and if you see like a festival booth you're like oh i want to get this there one of us will go stand in line and then the other one runs off with the kids and goes and finds whatever it is we're supposed to find yeah. and the great thing is they change the location for each festival and each from year to year so if you did like we just did flower and garden this year the location of spike the bee was different than where he was last year and the answers were different too yeah and, yeah and they're generally in the same areas they don't make it incredibly difficult it's not I mean, some sometimes are, they do. Sometimes man. it's hard, but it's not something where there's no way you would ever find that. Yeah. And then, too, if you ask a cast member, they're like, maybe check over mm, here. So yeah. they're not trying to, <laughs> you know, give you a hard time to try to find these things. But like truly outside of I think outside of writing Guardians of the Galaxy, like these scavenger hunts are our favorite thing to do in Epcot. Yeah, they're. They're just so much fun. And it's something that everybody can participate in. There's not a height restriction. There's not a, like, it's literally just go look. Yeah. <laughs> like, go look and find this thing. But then once you do find it, like with Spike, you had to match the flower to the country that they were in or the garden that they were in. And so I forget, in the American Garden, maybe it was like a sunflower. And so you grab the sunflower sticker, sticker and you stick it on the American Gardens. And then you go to the next one and you do that. Like, it's simple. It's very simple. It is a scavenger hunt. Um, it's not a multi-step thing. It's just easy. But because it's in the World Showcase, it takes forever to do. <laughs> so well, again, I, like we're making stops to you know to to hydrate throughout the the, the journey. Very but. high. I mean, I have like three drinks, <laughs> but we're very hydrated by the end of it. But it's I think because. Epcot's just laid out the way it is and there's this huge lagoon that you have to walk through. It takes a while to do all of it. So if you are going to do it, like you're committing to like I mean, I, three I, or four hours. I thought probably. there was like some kind of stat where Disneyland Resort could fit into the. I saw that. Into the water of. Of World Showcase. Of World Showcase. So like you're walking around 
Disneyland. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to, I can't confirm that, but it was just something I had seen. So I saw that I, too. I was haven't, like, haven't verified that. If you, if you know, let us know if it, that's true. We're going to believe it is until, <laughs> until, until someone proven. tells me not. Yeah. <laughs> but that one is fantastic. Like I said, we do it every year and the prizes can range from, I can't even remember all of them, but typically like we've gotten a glass or a cup before plates. I remember we got the mini sink from the Sunday. <laughs> no, they ran out of prizes that one time. And so they gave us the kitchen sink that the Sunday comes <laughs> in. <laughs> so again, yeah, quote unquote prizes. This year was kind of weird. Like for the Easter egg hunt, they gave us a, it almost looks like a, like a charm, but it's hung on a ribbon like it's a like a ornament yeah but they've given us easter eggs in the past and like they give they're cute like it's something that the kids can quote unquote prize prize there's it's something like the kids like them for that's, the that's, trip it's, it's they they got something it's fine uh but it, we do it every, like every single time we go we're like even if we don't complete oh and here's the best part if you're not going to complete it you can still turn it in and get your quote unquote prize yeah. um so you don't have to complete it but yeah, you paid for it. You yeah. paid for that quote unquote prize. And you're working for it too. <laughs> that leaves the last one at Disney World. The last one that we have done at Disney World, which is DuckTales World Showcase Adventures. This came out, I think, last year or sometime. And we did it. I don't think you did it at all. We did Japan. I did Japan with our son. Um, but I think there's six or seven countries that you can go to. And it is a Play Disney Parks app based game where you're on a mission with DuckTales or the, the Huey, Louie and Dewey. And you have to I don't want to give away the story, but like you're on a mission in each of these countries to do something to gather these artifacts. And kind of like Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, you're going to these shop windows and you're going into different areas in the land and you're interacting and you're triggering things. I think that's the, it was like, the, it's the evolution of Sorcerers mm -hmm. because it's not just a screen, not just a screen because there are parts where there's screens, but there's physical changes to the environment, you know, that's, that's happening and you're seeing it and you're the only one you know, in that area that's really aware of what's going on. Everybody else is doing their, you know, waiting in line or, you know, in the shops or whatever. So I think that part is like super cool because, you know, seeing, um, I, I'm, I'm guessing they're not statues, but just like figures, you know, life-size figures of these characters doing something. And it's only triggered because you're, it, it's, it reminds me of kind of the, uh, like when you're hacking the, the moisture evaporators in Batu, yeah, something like that. But not just noises, but actual things moving. That's yeah. the cool part about it. Yeah, it was delightful. So we did the Japan one, but and here's here's like that the, was last year. Last year, but it it still recognized that we had done that one, and like a year later, we were able to finish the rest of them. But here's like my one gripe with it is it is completely app based, so you are on Play Disney Parks the entire time that you're doing it. And it takes like an hour to complete each country that you're in, about. Yeah. 30 minutes to an hour. Um, but if it's like your kid is on your phone, then you don't have access to your phone for that entire time. And so you can't like check for Genie Plus, like for Lightning Lanes or Mobile Order or anything like that. And so it's kind of just like, okay, here you go. Here's the phone. Let's go do this thing. So you kind of have to unplug slash plug in specifically to this one thing yeah uh, I, I mean and again this is where i go back to the the app you we're aware of it because disney's talked about it but it's not something that you really it, there's nowhere else that tells you hey or reminds you hey go check out the uh the ducktales game mm -hmm. you know go on disney play app and check out this you know ducktales game like there's not that reminder to like go try it out because once you go there you're like all right, well, let me see what I could do, you know, get into over here in Epcot. Well, and that was the thing is when we, on our last trip over spring break, when Ratatouille was 70 minutes and we had the scavenger hunt, like, well, I guess we'll just go do the scavenger hunt. But you were like, oh, why don't we do the DuckTales game? And I was like, I, I wouldn't have even, I wouldn't have thought to do that until you mentioned it. Like, it's not something that's actively, there's no signs. Yeah. I, there may be... 
like somewhere in one place in Epcot that says like do the DuckTales World Showcase Adventures. There's not a bunch of signs around yeah. to tell you to do it. And there's not at the six or seven countries that it's in. There's not a little like icon to kind of just like visually remind you like, hey, if you haven't done this one, go do that. Yeah. That would be so easy to do. But it was so much fun. We powered through and we did all of the remaining countries that we hadn't done before. <clears throat> and it took us like six hours. Well, we did the egg scavenger hunt, the, the spike, flower and garden, flower and, garden and the ducktails throughout the entire showcase well the, the whole flower, park yeah the yeah. flower and garden is the entire park and easter and ducktales is just world showcase mm -hmm. but yeah it took us the entire day yeah like you know rope drop till i think it was like two when we went back to the room i think it was later was it three yeah, i think it was later than that it could be and like because i think after that it's when we left and had dinner yeah because you guys you and our son rode guardians because we had the virtual queue for it and so me and our daughter went and we did, we just kept doing the hunts. Yeah, yeah I did the ones with uh, living by the land stuff. Yeah, we did all of that, those things, but. Um, living with the land. Yes, yes. But we're doing something with the land. <laughs> but I didn't ride Guardians. Like, I, I didn't ride a single ride that day. And that was one of the most memorable days of our trip was just getting to do that and just go explore. Yeah. No, it, really it, it, it is one of those things that the kids they'll still mention because they're like, oh yeah, I found this one. Like, cause that's again, there's, there's like this accomplishment that they found, you know, whatever the egg or they found spike or right. they unlocked this secret thing. Right. So, so. I think it's, it's like super cool to have that those, or that type of game uh, at that park. Right. And then when they do advertise it, like they'll have the, they'll literally have like an advertisement outside of buy your scavenger. Oh, for the egg hunts. Yeah. For those. Um, <clears throat> but those are the, our favorites they're all at epcot they just happen to all be at epcot there is there are two that we have not done yet one of them is at magic kingdom it is a pirates of the caribbean themed one but that one's kind of weird so i think it's similar in that you're running around the land and you're completing missions you have to go to the shack to like start it but it's only open for like six hours a day and they say it takes anywhere from like one and a half to two hours to complete it so and you have to be there well before it closes so it's like you've got a very like limited time frame in which you can do this mm. so we haven't done that one yet we didn't even know about it until last year and again that's why i think these games are secret because like we go so often how do we not know about these things yeah. they just don't talk about them the other one is the seek and find over at disneyland for seasons of the force um and that one is similar to the Epcot scavenger hunts and that you have to go into, you start at Tomorrowland, you go and get your card and then you go into Batu and you find these cylinders and on the cylinders it has Arabesh. You have to write them down and then you have to go back to Tomorrowland, decode the Arabesh. That decodes a word and then I think you can go turn that in. Well, there's like different posts of letters to, to right. for, for decoding but yeah so you have to find the cylinders and then you have to find the decoding stations and then you have to after you've decoded it then you have to find your secret word and then you have to so it's like a three level scavenger hunt which sounds like right up our alley honestly um i would really love to do it but they're only running that for like two months for now yeah for now i'm hoping that they are doing this as kind of a bit of a test to see like, can we keep this up? So, but I, I think one of the things that, you know, we're, we're watching our friends, you know, participate in this. Live their best lives. And it's, it's almost like divided. Like some people are excited about it and they enjoy it and others feel it's not enough. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think it's, it is justified saying it's not enough because it doesn't feel like a challenge per se. But I think, again, if you're looking at these games, they're not something that's going to be your, your rack in your brain. Like, well, okay, what, what is this? Like, th what is this mystery type of thing? Like it is, you know, you discovering the land, you learning new things about the area and you end up getting a prize at the end. Yeah. So, I mean, I, again, I, I we haven't participated in it. We haven't done it, but 
it looks like it's something that would be similar to the scavenger hunts that we do at Epcot. And then it's it has like multi layers to it. So yeah. I, I think it's I actually think it's like more complex than any of the ones that we have over at Disney World. Yeah. And it's meant to be family friendly. So like you can't make it too complex. Like I think all of the people that have done it so far or that we've that we've watched experience it are like adults just doing that on their own and they're not there with their kids. I think if we watched like families do it, they'd be like, oh, this is amazing. Or, oh, this is kind of tough for kids. Yeah. So it's a little, little give and take there. But, okay, we've talked about all of the ones that there are, everything that exists. And we've talked a little bit about like what improvements we would want to see. But like where do you see areas for improvements when it comes to these secret games? Uh, I mean, I think one of the big things would be the – the the app because they they're they're trying to utilize that technology and I don't think it's going to be something that they get rid of. Um, I really think there has to be just better up like like better care for the app so that people want to be in it. I know you don't necessarily want to be in it, but it's something that you're more aware of and paying attention to and. Maybe if you're in an area, a little pop up that, you know, or your Magic Band Plus pops up and says, like, check your phone and your phone tells you, hey, there's the DuckTales app here. Or yeah. there's an app, you know, there's a game nearby. So you you could start looking for it. Like it could divert you. It could eat you into some other game. Um, well, just also the interface for the Play Disney Parks app is like absolutely terrible because you literally have to swipe through all of the pages and it's not smart enough to know, like, I'm in Hollywood Studios. I'm specifically in Galaxy's Edge. Let me look at Please these. Please open my data pad. Like, it'll be like, are you in Animal Kingdom right now? It's like, <laughs> no, I'm not. But you have to swipe. Like, instead, make it a, a homepage that has all the icons. It would, you could yeah, make they, it easier. They, <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that, that's, that's one of the things that I think, because I, I don't feel that they're going to get a, go away from it because mm -hmm. it, they utilize it. Yeah. It's just make some improvements to it to, to be actually useful. Right. Um, that and, and the other technology, the Magic Band Plus. Nice. Make it something where people want to use it and not just for a week, but to continuing to want to use it. Yeah. And I, for me, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is there for getting better functionality and ent entertainment out of the Magic Band Plus. I think you could rework the Batu Bounty Hunt. And I don't know I don't know how, but you could do it in a way that makes it a little bit more enjoyable to continue doing it. Um for the statues, because they're all over the parks, you could make that if you if you leverage Play Disney Parks, you could make it more of a thing of if you're going and you're tapping or you're waving to the Mad Hatter, maybe he tells you like, Oh, go see my friend the Cheshire Cat. And then you go over there and it kind of just like pings you around and it makes it a game similar to Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom or the the DuckTales one. But I, I think you would need I mean, you need some, taps. You would need some kind of uh, start point. Like it would have to be where they start you like with the play app or something it starts you, hey, you go on this, you know this adventure, this Alice in Wonderland adventure or whatever. Yeah. And it you talk to other Disney characters, but it may be just like lead you down this path and you get different dialogue, but you're going off of that. That app is tracking you. Yeah. Or like each one of them gives you a letter. You have to go in order and get all the letters and then you have a word at the end of it and you go turn it in and you get like a little, I don't know, a sticker or something, right? Like, I, I mean, again, I, that's where you, the, the, you start looking cost analysis. Like if everybody's doing it, it's, it's gonna but nobody's cost. doing these games. That's the thing. Well, again, that you, you gotta, you're not gonna put more money into it to try to get I know. to get people to spend money. So here, here's my pitch though. For yes, I absolutely agree. Play Disney Parks needs a lot of improvement, and you could do so much interactivity and so many more puzzles and hunts aside from like the in queue games that they have right now. Magic Band Plus, we need that to be something that we. We'll be upset if we don't pack. Now when we don't pack it, we're like, hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. 
Hollywood Studios is so underserved when it comes to these kind of puzzles and scavenger hunts. Well, I mean, it, but so is Magic Kingdom. I think it I is. think it's it more wasn't. I think it's more impactful for you because that's like, you know, and and I you know, it's 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 my one of my favorite parks. But thinking about it, Epcot, I think it's good. Like right now, I as far as those, I, we're good. No, no, Animal Kingdom. You know, they have the Wilderness Explorer. Maybe another one would be nice, but it's sufficient, right? Yeah. Hollywood Studios has Batu and the Batu Bounty Hunt, and it's okay. It's eh. Mm. But there's other parts of that that park that you could have stuff. You could have Magic stuff. Kingdom has this incredible, you know, area. Add more, st- like add something, because I think both of those parks need something. Magic Kingdom has the infrastructure in place, and that's what's frustrating. They had something that was absolutely wonderful. And it no longer exists. Hollywood Studios has never had something like that that gets you to go all the way to the very back for Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy or back over by the Muppets area. Like, if you don't care about going to seeing Muppets 3D Vision, like, you're not going into that space. I don't throw shade at Kermit. I love it. I love it back there. (laughs) And now they've got, like... the best rat pizza in town. (laughs) It is. The city's top rated. (laughs) But, and they've got those frozen Jack and Coke little kiosk there too it's it's becoming one of our favorite places to hang out but if you don't have a reason to go in there if you're not if you don't know you're not exploring those areas and i think that's the great thing about these hunts is that it gets you to go there and then like don't even get me started there's a toy story land right next to it there is incredibles metropolis pixar what is there are easter eggs in every pixar movie ever and there's not some kind of game where you're going and finding Easter eggs throughout those two areas. Like, come on, like hide some, hide the little pizza planet trucks all over. And then you have to go into the app and like boop them or something. I don't know, something. There's opportunities there. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. Yeah. If, I if feel they calm just... right now and I'm just all like, give us more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's, it's more of a, you know, again, I, I'm I'm putting my 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 uh, my business hat, and it would have to be something where it, it doesn't like we don't know what kind of infrastructure they have. Like if they have the same kind of thing, where they could boop. Yeah. And it would have to be again they the app like the app is the easiest one because they can control that, you know, based off of GPS and and having this thing, but. But yes, I would I agree that there should be more ways for the park to eat, you know, have these, you know, pulling people away from just these main rides. Yeah. And, and to be place. to be fair, Toy Story Land has all the people in it all the time. Yeah. So like we don't need more people loitering around. <laughs> but with no seats. So no seating. No, they, I think they've added a couple more like chairs. Oh, bench. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was a bench. <laughs> But yeah, I think Hollywood Studios, I feel like we need better better games within the parks to get people to just go explore. Just go take a stroll down Sunset Boulevard. Like if you don't have a reason to go over there for that one or two rides that are there, like you're not exploring. You're just sitting in the in Toy Story Land. You're not yeah. sitting, you're standing. <laughs> uh, but there are let's do some honorable mentions because there are some areas outside of the parks that have that have these games like all of the resorts the skyliner we did the one on the disney wish um that was app based as well so there there are these things that exist and they're easy so i mean the thing is is like disney's doing them is just i i think the big focus of what we're is more of making people aware that there's other options right. i think that's the thing it's like yes we could say like yeah this would be this would be nice having a little bit of this would be nice but i think what it really comes down to is go, go try these things out like there's there they are these there there are these games for you to go try out it's not just the rides i i, I think like this year i feel i've been on this kick of it's not just about the rides there's like so much more like <laughs> Like, you know, having the characters and just these other, like the, just other attractions. It's not just the rides. Because yeah. I think that's where sometimes it gets so, like, 
ingrained that you have to ride the ride. You have to ride. It's like there's so many more things at the parks that is not just that. That's true. It's it's very true because you don't want to you don't nobody wants to like stand in line for rides and then you only get three rides done. You're like, oh, what a waste of a day. There's so many other things you can do. Yeah. Go do some scavenger hunts. Yeah. Oh, but here's the thing. Here's a call out to you. We may not know all of the secret games. These are the ones that we're aware of. So if you know of any, leave them in the comments because we will I, I mean, we I, will book a trip to investigate. I this. mean, the thing is, is like when we were started here, like talking about this game, this game, I was like, I bet you there's games that we don't know. I was like, I bet you anything that it's just it's not in, in, in anywhere that we talk about or we we look and I bet you there's somebody like, oh, yeah, I love playing this. Like and it's a Disney, you know, Disney game that they have but you know but yeah let us know please please let us know because like i said like this these this is our jam this is what we like to do in the parks <laughs> just go do puzzles <laughs> so drop a comment if you do have some some intel for us or maybe some of the resort ones are really cool to do let us know and if you tried any of these like what's your what's your take on it yeah but i think that wraps up this conversation thank you so much for hanging out with us until next time.